Sorry about that, guys. Um, I accidentally pressed stop recording instead of screen share. <laughs> so um, continuing on from our retaining springs, uh, let's go ahead and go back to our screen share here. Uh, right now the tool that is being used is to use the tool to push down on that front plate I was talking about. You're going to either twist that or twist the backing plate of the pin. So we want those slots to match up, kind of like when you were a kid and there was those uh, toys where you put the square in the square hole and the round piece in the round hole and so on and so forth. We want that slot to fit through the front plate so we can actually dismantle that piece there and we'll do the same here. Um, also, once you've removed everything, you've removed your springs, you've removed your shoes, that wheel cylinder needs some tension to keep those pistons in place. And if anybody is to put any pressure, say even on any of the other brake assemblies, it's going to apply pressure and push those pistons out. And number one thing, this happens all the time, especially with new technicians, if you don't have a brake assembly in place, a caliper or a, a drum brake assembly with wheel cylinder, if my assembly is not in place, there's not a disc in there, there's not a drum on there or everything's disconnected. If you step on the brakes, you will destroy that piece and you're gonna either need to rebuild it or you're gonna need to replace it. It's a big pain in the butt. You're gonna have hydraulic fluid everywhere. You're gonna need to replace either the caliper or the wheel cylinder or rebuild it if you have that option. Um, and then now you're gonna to have to bleed the entire system. And a customer's not gonna pay for that because it's not their fault. That's your problem. You, were sh you should have known better to not step on the brake pedal. So that's why I'm letting you guys know right now. It's a number one thing. Do not step on the brake pedal. Do not let anybody else step on the brake pedal while you have a disc or drum assembly dismantled. So just keep that in mind. Now with that being said, even just pressure in the system from compressing another brake assembly um, or even doing anything, you don't want those pistons to slowly move out and then eventually out because you're going to have fluid everywhere and that same thing's going to happen. So they do make these nice fancy spring clamps. They're not super fancy, uh, but they make these nice spring clamps that you will want to clamp around the pistons on the wheel cylinder to hold them in place and keep them from shooting out, which is, uh, this is actually a big time lifesaver. It, it may not save you if you press on the brake though. So just keep that in mind. Um, this is just while you're working on everything. Your brake springs are your brake return springs. When you take them off, you're gonna want to take a look at them and make sure that you inspect them for any damage. If they have any bends, kinks right here, we've got a bent spring right here on uh, the bottom picture here. If there's any damage, don't attempt to bend them back in place. Um, just buy a new spring kit. They're not very expensive. Um, and, and make sure that you relate to the customer how important that, uh, that replacing these, if they are damaged, is. If they're not damaged, no problem. You can slap them right back on. Make sure that you're using the correct tools too. I am guilty myself of using um, uh, pliers or, or uh, uh, diagonal cutters, which is not good at all on these springs. Um, so if you're using the wrong tools, you may damage these springs and now you're gonna have to buy a new kit. So rather than do that, make sure you're using the correct uh, spring tools or spring removal or um, uh, tools to put them back on. So uh, just, just keep that in mind. When you are assembling your brake shoes, um, some of the brake shoes will have uh, clips that hold uh, maybe parking brake assembly on or other pieces. A lot of times we'll use a little um, e-clip or a horseshoe clip. Uh, I will show you guys when we get into lab how to dismantle those. They're actually super easy. Um, you're supposed to replace them every single time. Just so you know, if you can't get a hold of a new clip, um, what you can do is just use pliers to squeeze them back together. Sometimes they're spring loaded, sometimes they'll actually move. Um, so, sorry, it took my screen share off. What's going on here?
All right, sorry about that. I don't know what happened there. Um, so where we were are these clips, you can use a flat screwdriver to sort of pry in between here and twist the screwdriver. But I like to put a rag around it. Uh, even with some of the springs, sometimes if you put a rag around something, it keeps it from flying off. And if you have a tiny, tiny little clip, sometimes it will go off into the abyss, never to be seen again. And that really sucks, um, especially if you're trying to get a job done really fast and now you lost a component. Um, so put a rag around it and if it flies off, it will stay at least within the rag. Uh, and then when you're done, you can sort of put the clips back on with a, uh, a set of pliers um, to sort of pinch it back if it's not a spring loaded clip. I'll see if I've got a better picture here to show you most of the time. This is from the parking brake assembly lever um, connecting to your shoe. Um, when you are reinstalling the shoes, this tool right here is a spring installation tool uh, that's going to help you out. It's going to have a little uh, divot at the top so you can sort of hook onto something. Notice how we've got the spring hooked onto this tool. All you need to do is sort of pry up and the spring will fall back into its proper place. Uh, if you know how to use these tools properly, they can be a lifesaver and make life so much easier. If not, drum brakes can really be a bear. And if you hate drum brakes, you hate them with a passion. Every time you do them, they just suck and, and you have bad experience. What that tells you is you need to do more of them. The more you hate to do something on a car, it means that you need to sharpen up that skill, uh, especially with drum brakes, because once you do enough of them, they're no problem, no matter how complicated they can be. If you know how to utilize the tools properly and you're uh, familiar with the designs. Um, so I'm gonna show you guys when we get into lab, I will demo these tools and, and show you exactly how uh, you would use them. They're, they're nice as long as you know how to use them. If they're foreign to you and you've never known how to use them, then they can be pain in the butt. I will try to see if I can find some videos on how to use these tools. I know I've looked in the past and I did not find very good ones. So um, I will try to, if at the very least to even make a video um, if I've got some of these in my toolbox here, which I may or may not, I might have taken them to school. Um, as I mentioned before, using pliers or diagonal cutters can, can be damaging. So you really wanna try not to use that if, you, if at all possible. Um, I'm gonna show you guys when we get back to class how to utilize the drum brake lathe as well as the disc brake lathe. Um, the drum needs to be removed from the vehicle. So some disc brakes uh, can, well, all disc brakes, they do make um, a on-car brake lathe. I'll show you guys what that looks like. Um, I will show you guys the off-car brake lathe. Drums cannot be done on the vehicle. They need to be removed from the vehicle in order to be turned because they their surface area is on the inside. So there'd be no way to hook uh, a lathe up on the vehicle there. Um, with either disc or drum, you're going to hook up a spring or a silencer band because as you're cutting material off of the drum, it does have a tendency to create a frequency that will actually create a chatter uh, pattern on the drum and we don't want that. So I'll show you guys in person how to do all of this um, and eventually make a video that's decent so I can show it uh, in the future online. Uh, and then a couple of things I'm going to show you guys in person as well is once you put your new shoes on, everything's back together, how you know where to adjust the shoes to. Um, there is something called a safe set, uh, and that's really a brand, but that's uh, the only brand I've actually ever seen of this tool. Um, I'm sure there's much, you know, more basic brands. I'm sure they make plastic versions of this. Um, but in industry, they're commonly known as a safe set. Uh, so what you're going to do, it, it looks kind of like a caliper. So it looks like you're doing some measuring, but you're actually not. So what you're going to do is you're first going to put the smaller side inside the drum, in the widest part of the drum, and you are going to snug it down. Then you're going to take the wide portion up here, and you're going to set it around the shoes. And if <clears throat> if it's too large and it's all loose over the shoes, you need to bring your shoes out. If it's too tight, it should sort of fit like in this bottom picture here in picture B. It should fit sort of snug touching each side going up and down on each side of the shoes. Um, 
if it can't and it, it sort of gets stuck, then you need to pull the shoes in. What's really nice is it's not a full fledged, it's not gonna tell you exactly where to adjust the shoes at, but it's at least gonna give you a ballpark. And sometimes when you get really good at using it, it will put you in a good spot most every time um, to where you only need to make minimal adjustments with the drum on the vehicle. So what you're gonna do is when you're done with all of that, you've done your, your baseline adjusting, put the drum on the vehicle and spin it. There should be a tiny, tiny, slight amount of drag. Not a lot um, at all. It should be very, very minimal. Um, very, very, very minimal. If we don't have any drag at all, the problem is, is you don't really know uh, where the shoes are at. So create a little bit of drag and then you can sort of back off just a hair. Um, but if there's no drag at all, you don't know how far the shoes are going to have to travel out. And so this is where the safe set makes it really nice and easy, but that's how you're going to feel if the drum is, uh, adjusted properly is go ahead and spin it. You should have a tiny, 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 slight amount of drag, and then you can sort of back it off just a hair and, um, uh, when you go to test drive the vehicle, you'll know that they were adjusted properly or not, depending on your brake pedal. You would rather have a low brake pedal than have them dragging though, so just keep that in mind. Um, if I have a low brake pedal, I know that I need to pull my shoes out further. If you do notice that they're dragging, be careful. You'll destroy a brand new set of brakes um, by overheating them if you don't catch this in time before you give it back to the customer. So just throwing that out there. Um, I already kind of talked to you guys about how to adjust the drums with the drums installed, or I'm sorry, adjust the star wheel adjuster with the drums installed. Here's a sort of cutaway piece here. Here's the window uh, that you would stick your screwdrivers in. One screwdriver is pushing the lever out and the other is turning the wheel backwards so we can move the shoes inward or outward. Um, if you're moving them outward, there's no need to push the lever out. It will automatically sort of click. Uh, as the teeth run past it. Um, so that's how you are going to adjust them. Uh, what's cool is like calipers, you have to pop open the bleeder, compress the caliper piston, close the bleeder, and then you can remove your tool. There's no compressing your wheel cylinder or doing any of that, so you don't have to necessarily worry about bleeding them in the same way. Uh, common defects are going to be cracks. Um, you can have cracks along the line that are really hard to see. Uh, your book talks about hitting the drum with a hammer. This one's actually pretty decent because it should ring. Uh, you're not going to hit it really hard. Just sort of tap it with a hard face hammer, and you should get a nice ring out of it. If the drum does not ring, something's stopping the frequency, uh, and that something is generally going to be a crack. Something we also want to look at is any glazed spots or hard. <coughs> excuse me, hard spots in the drum. If I have any bluish, uh, purplish spots in the drum, those are hard spots that cannot be machined out and I need to replace my drum. Little tiny surface heat checking cracks may or may not be able to be machined out. That will depend um, on how bad they are. Sometimes they're real close to the surface and just doing a quick machine will show that they can uh, be machined out. But if you do a good pass, of a few thousands and uh, you, you're you still seeing cracks, maybe even another pass and you're still seeing cracks, don't bother with that drum, you need to get a new one. Another common thing that can happen is uh, scoring. So this is our shoe here and this is E, we're looking at E in the middle here. Our shoe can build a pattern that matches like a puzzle with the drum. This will make removing the drums really, really tough. It happens uh, quite often, so I may get uh, contamination of a rock or something inside, which is quite uncommon with uh, shoes, but maybe something inside of the drum broke off and it's now wearing score inside the shoe. Well, what will start to happen is uh, even though that material might be worn down and gone, now I've worn a, uh, a divot in the drum and now my shoe is going to wear according to the drum and vice versa. So uh, that's very common that happens. We can get concave wearing, um, especially when we get a lot of heat to a drum or even convex. Um, either of these are going to make it really hard to remove the drum. Here's another uh, uh, sort of grooved surface or scoring that can happen. Here's a taper from a bell mouth 
uh, I talked about bell mouth a few weeks ago, um, but here is another uh, visual of how that one works. So uh, it's normal to see difference in wear sort of top to bottom of the shoe, but not from side to side. Um, so just keep that in mind. All right, and we made it through drum breaks. So I'm gonna stop share here. Um, I believe this is the fourth video. So we will, um, we will come back next week uh, and we'll talk about, I believe, hydraulic systems. Uh, but if you have any questions at all about any of the material, make sure you throw your questions up in the discussion board. I will get to them ASAP, I promise. I had some issues this week getting to the discussion board. So I really do apologize to all of you who asked questions and it sort of took me a little while. Um, some of you guys actually helped each other with answering questions and I thank you so much for that. That, that really helps me as well as your classmates. So thank you for taking a moment out for doing that. Thank you guys for sticking in through all of this mess. Again, feel free with any questions at all here on Canvas um, or, or anything. I'll keep you guys posted via Instagram as well. Um, if you're not on my Instagram, I'm, I'm posting lots of updates on that. Um, I hate throwing a plug in here for that. Um, but just in case you didn't see it in the intro video, make sure you guys are following on Instagram, uh, Miss A underscore the shop teacher. So I can keep you guys posted uh, on everything that's going on. You have my email address on your syllabus. I will uh, try to keep you guys posted and answer questions on either of those platforms as well as Canvas. So I'm trying to make myself as available as possible for you guys. Um, hopefully this is going by decently smooth for you guys, um, but just wanted to uh, make sure I threw that out there so everybody knew. All right, guys, see you next week. Thanks for tuning in.